the land of sunflowers and fields. This is my speech on Ukraine. There are wars going on all over the world. Thousands are dying from Syria to Yemen and now the current place of conflict, Ukraine. Many did not know much about Ukraine when I surveyed my audience. They did not even know where it was in the world until very recently. I am here to provide some history on Ukraine that might not have been covered in the news or by Eric's speech. I am a history major myself, and I have been interested in history since I was in middle school. I have been keeping up with this war since before it even broke out. I have been basically glued to the news. So, in this speech I will cover the history of Ukraine, the wars between Ukraine and Russia, including the Crimean War, and the current war in Ukraine. Let's start off with the history of Ukraine. We'll start with the foundation of the city of Kiev. Kiev was founded in 882 AD by the Kievan Rus. The Kievan Rus were most likely Vikings that settled down in the Ukrainian region and integrated into the Slavic culture around them. Today, the Kievan Rus are the ancestors of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. Now we'll move on to the development of the Ukrainian language. The Ukrainian language split, split from Russia around the 1200s, and today Ukrainian is still Ukrainian and Russia share about 62% of their vocabulary. If you want to put that into perspective, try writing out 10 words and getting rid of four of them and having your friend trying to read that. Even though they share 62% of their vocabulary, they aren't very mutually intelligible. Now, the creation of Ukraine. Ukraine was created in 1919 as the Ukrainian SSSR, SSR, or Soviet Socialist Republic, and this was declared during the Russian Civil War. Ethnic Ukrainian lands were later added onto this Ukrainian SSR by the Soviet Union during World War II from lands including Poland, Romania, and Czechoslovakia. Ukraine then kept these borders when it left the USSR. And now we'll go on to the wars that Ukraine and Russia have fought in. During the Russian Civil War, Ukraine was split between four powers, the White Army, the Red Army, the Black Army, and the Ukrainian People's Republic. This here is actually the flag of the Black Army which was controlled by anarchists. The Red Army was controlled by the Soviets, or as many of you may know, the communists. And the White Army was led by the former Russian uh, Empire, the army that they still had left over. The Ukrainian Rep People's Republic, though, was the only one that was seeking independence from Russia. The others just wanted to control it. Eventually, the Red Army and the Black Army teamed up together, defeated the White Army, and then defeated the Ukrainian People's Republic and established the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union's first leader was Vladimir Lenin, but after him came Stalin. And Stalin's rule directly caused the Holodomor in Ukraine in 1932, which killed about 4 million people. It is recognized by 16 countries as a mass genocide. Ukraine then uh, protests for independence from 1990 to 1991, and they also made a 300-mile human chain from Kiev to Lviv, which are both Ukrainian cities. Ukraine eventually gained its independence on August 24, 1991, and later the USS SR dissolved on December 26, 1991. Russia, still wanting to control Ukraine, uh, annexed Crimea after Ukraine had got rid of their Russian uh, puppet government after the fall of the USSR. They did this after Crimea had pro-Russian demonstrations. They eventually declared independence on March 16, 24, 
and Russia then annexed them on March 18th. Now we'll move on to the current war that is taking place. Why is there a current war in Ukraine? Well, obviously, Russia still wants some control over Ukraine. But Putin has also put in his own reasons. Putin says that there are Nazis in Ukraine that need to be gotten rid of, and he calls this the denazification uh, part of invasion of Ukraine. Russia is also afraid that Ukraine will join NATO and that it won't have uh, much protection from Western powers if Ukraine does join NATO. Ukraine is also very resource rich. It is also known as the breadbasket of the world, which produces lots of grain, as you know. And Russia may also want its old borders back. And if it gets its old borders back, that's another buffer that it has uh, from Western powers. In the current war, other countries are really not trying to get involved. If this spills over into other countries besides Ukraine, it could possibly lead to World War III, as Russia is the largest country in the world. Russia is mainly sticking to the main roads and highways. As you can see in this map, all these thin lines are because the Russian military is mainly sticking to the roads. The uh, land in Ukraine is too soft and muddy for Russian tanks to go through right now. Russia, because of its invasion of Ukraine, has become the most sanctioned country in the world with over 5,000 crippling sanctions. We've also seen lots of propaganda from this world. For example, we have this video right here. <laughs> That was what some people are calling the ghost of Kiev. But this video is actually completely false. That footage, which people have been sharing around all over the internet, is actually footage from a video game called uh, Combat Simulator, I believe. In the future, we can expect possible Belarus involvement, as the president of Belarus, uh, Lukashenko, has actually uh, put some of his plans out there on live national television. You can see Belarus uh, having troops move into Ukraine and some Russian troops actually moving into Moldova, which could be very disastrous. Russia and China could become greater allies as Russia distanced itself even further from the West with all these sanctions and such. Russia could look to China for help. We can also see, of course, the price of gas continue to rise. Or we could even see a possibility that Ukraine joins EU or NATO. But if this happens, it could lead to a much larger war. In conclusion, Ukraine is a country with a long history, which has fought for independence multiple times throughout its history. Even in the face of Russian domination, it continues to stand strong and fight against uh, oppression, standing up for freedom. Against all odds, they are somehow able to hold against the largest country in the world. I'd like to see where this ends. Here are my sources cited. Thank you.